Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. According to The Athletic, Jesse Lingard will stay at Manchester United in January to fight for his place under Ralph Rangnick. Jesse Lingard wanted to leave Manchester United under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Not so long ago, Manchester United said they wanted £20 million to sell Lingard in January. Lingard's current contract at Man United expires next summer. Uh, Newcastle are no longer in for him now. Um, revert back to earlier on in the season... It said West Ham wanted to re-sign him. At the second half of last season, Lingard endured a four-month loan spell with West Ham and he made an impact. At one point, he said Lingard wanted to go abroad. <clears throat> Lingard has been part of the football club for a long time. He is not Manchester United's academy. You know, he's had his good periods, he's had his bad periods. Lingard's made 222 appearances for Man United and he's scored 35 goals. Now, Edison Cavani could stay at Manchester United until the summer. Now, it has recently said that Edison Cavani has agreed to join Barcelona on an 18-month contract. But yesterday... He said Manchester United are reluctant to let Edison Cavani leave on a free transfer in January. Barcelona are obviously seeing Edison Cavani as a replacement for Aguero because Aguero recently retired due to heart problems. Not so long ago, Cavani rejected Boca Juniors. Uh, Cavani has got an injury at the moment, but he's very close to returning. He had an injury earlier on this season. Cavani initially lost his place in the team with Man United re-signing Ronaldo last summer. Manchester United got Edison Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. and This season has been Cavani's second full season at Man United. Cavani's got a good pedigree behind him. Look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at PSG. Uh, not only that, he was a long-serving player when he was at PSG. <clears throat> now, according to Sky Sports News... Manchester United are close to appointing Richard Arnold as the new CEO. It could be officially announced as early as today. Richard Arnold is obviously coming in to replace Ed Woodward. You know, are you happy about Richard Arnold coming in? Because I think the East United fans are not happy. Now, Ralph Rangnick, he has to heavily invest next year if he is to succeed as Manchester United manager. Now, it says Ralph Rangnick has been given a £100 million transfer budget for January. 
you can get quite a few players out of one hundred million pounds. Now there's quite a lot of players on Manchester United's agenda. You know, you know the news on Bubakar Kamara. He said the other day that Man United are in advanced talks to sign Bubakar Kamara as the first transfer of the Ralph Rangnick era. El National said that Bubakar Kamara is close to joining Manchester United. Barcelona have been in for him. And revert back to deadline day last summer. It said Kamara was close to making a move to the Premier League because Newcastle and Wolves went in for him. Now, Bubakar Kamara is predominantly a holding midfielder, but he can be deployed as a centre-half. You know, he's only the age of 22, so still young, got a lot of development in him. He currently plays for Marseille. He's been at Marseille all his life. He joined Marseille as a five-year-old back in 2005. So he's up their academy in that. And he broke into Marseille's senior squad back in 2016. He's made over 100 appearances for Marseille. His current contract at Marseille expires at the end of the season. Uh, Ralph Rangnick <coughs> told bosses at Man United that their midfield is weak in his interview for the job. Now Manchester United could sign Amadou Haidara next month. Earlier on this season, Rangnick said that he wants Amadou Haidara as his first signing as Man United manager. Rangnick knows the player well because Rangnick used to manage RB Leipzig. Amadou Haidara has a 33 million release clause. Not so long ago, he did admit Haidara that he's a Manchester United fan and also Cristiano Ronaldo fan. Antonio Rudiger, uh, there was reports coming out last week saying that Manchester United were interested in him. And I said Rangnick could be an important factor in Man United's chances of signing Rudiger because Rangnick knows Rudiger's agent and brother very, very well. And last week, Rudiger reportedly rejected a contract extension offer from Chelsea. His current contract at Chelsea expires at the end of the season. Um, last week it said Real Madrid held talks with Antonio Rudiger and Bayern Munich and PSG have also expressed an interest. I'd certainly take Rudiger at Man United. I think Rudiger and Varane would complement each other very well in our back line. Rudiger's proven in the Premier League as well, which is beneficial. He has been at Chelsea since 2017. Chelsea got him for around £29 million from Roma. And let me put into the equation, Man United have done transfer business with Chelsea before. You know, we got Matic and Juan Mata off them. Uh, Franky Dion, he's also been on Manchester United's agenda, but I think it's highly unlikely that we're going to get him because Fabrizio Romano provided us with an update on Franky Dion recently and he said Man United have held no talks and last week Franky Dion's father did admit that Man United have a disadvantage in the transfer pursuit. Dion's at Barcelona. Barcelona got him for Marx back in 2019 for around £65 million. Pounds. Um, Erling Haaland, I've been hearing that he can leave Borussia Dortmund. He said last week from Bild that Manchester United are currently only the serious bidder for Haaland but must qualify for the Champions League to get Erling Haaland. And Jude Bellingham and Calvin Phillips have also been spoken about. I think Manchester United will make one signing in January or two signings at the most.
But next year, you know, Rangnick's going to focus on the outgoings as well as the incomings. But Ralph Rangnick has enjoyed a good start to his managerial career at Manchester United. You know, he is unbeaten at the moment. Reflecting on the win against Norwich, that was back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League for Ralph Rangnick. You know, Rangnick is Manchester United's interim manager until the end of the season. And then it said Rangnick will continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. You know, if Rangnick does well as the interim manager, there's a chance that he'll get the Man United job on a permanent basis. Before Manchester United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. At the end of this season, I can assure that Manchester United will get a permanent manager. Now, Ruben Amorim has been mentioned a lot recently. He said Manchester United and Leeds are set to go in for him. Now, Ruben Amorim has a £25 million release clause. He's currently the Sporting Lisbon manager. He's been Sporting Lisbon manager for almost two years. He's got a contract with Sporting Lisbon until 2023. He's won a few trophies with Sporting Lisbon. Uh, before Sporting Lisbon, he managed Braga, did Ruben Amorim. And before Braga, he managed... Casa Pia. You know, he's a very young coach. He's only the age of 36. Um, not so long ago, Ruben Amorim advised Manchester United to hire Eric Ten Hag. Now, Eric Ten Hag's been linked with a permanent role at Man United. He said the other week that he's the favourite to become Man United's next permanent manager. Um, early on in the season, Edwin van der Sar spoke about Manchester United's interest in Eric Ten Hag. The other week, Roberto Mancini was also mentioned. Um, early on in the season, Brendan Rodgers was linked with a permanent role at Man United. I initially disregarded Brendan Rodgers because early on in the season, he said Brendan Rodgers dismissed links to the Man United job as Rodgers came out and said that he's proud to be at Leicester. And Potticino has persistently been linked with a permanent role at Man United. <coughs> you know, Manchester United have sacked four permanent managers since Ferguson. You know, Manchester United sacked David Moyes after 10 months. Then Manchester United sacked Louis van Gaal after two years. We won the FA Cup under Van Gaal. Then Manchester United sacked Jose Mourinho after like two and a half years. Mourinho did win three trophies in his first season. So yeah, he did enjoy one good season at Man United. And a month ago now, Manchester United sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Solskjaer was Manchester United manager for almost three years. Manchester United sacked Solskjaer after the 4-1 defeat to Watford. When Solskjaer got officially sacked, he gave a farewell interview and he got emotional in that farewell interview, which of course was understandable because Solskjaer adores the club and plus he was part of the club for a long time. It was the right decision to sack him. I don't think Manchester United really wanted to sack him, but obviously they had no choice but to sack him in the end. Because revert back to the last few months of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial tenure, it was terrible, you know, the performances were terrible and the results were terrible to go with the performances. And yeah, reflecting on that, some of the blame stemmed from Solskjaer because his tactics and his team selections were questioned a lot, but 
there was also players that had to take responsibility for those poor performances as well. It was obvious that the players were not playing under Solskjaer. But despite Solskjaer getting sacked a month ago now, all Manchester United fans still adore him and United fans are still chanting his name. You know, Solskjaer is a legend of Manchester United. He always will be a legend of Manchester United. You know, Solskjaer was a good player for Man United. You know, he had a proven pedigree as a player for the club because he won a lot of trophies as a player. And Solskjaer's most iconic moment as a player was when he scored the winning goal in the Champions League final back in 1999 at the Nou Camp. You know, Solskjaer won the club the treble and that is the club's greatest achievement. But, you know, Solskjaer has no proven pedigree as a manager. Obviously, the clubs he has managed in his managerial career so far. Obviously, managed Man United's reserve team. Then, obviously, managed Cardiff. His record at Cardiff was absolutely terrible. The reason he got sacked from Cardiff is because he got them relegated. Obviously, Solskjaer enjoyed two spells at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but they're not a big club. And of course, he managed Manchester United's senior squad. Uh, when Manchester United sacked Solskjaer last month, Man United paid Solskjaer around £7.5 million because he had the contract until 2024. Because, revert back to last summer, Solskjaer did sign a new three-year contract. I think there was an option of a third year. Manchester United should have never given him that contract because we all knew for a long time that he wasn't the long-term manager for Man United. You know, Solskjaer did not win a trophy as Man United manager, did he? And I said he was never capable of winning trophies as a manager. Manchester United have not won a trophy since 2017. Um, at the start of this season, you know, when Solskjaer was United manager, I did say, didn't I, you know, this season was always going to be big for him because, you know, he had big expectations to exceed, but the expectations were far too high for Solskjaer to exceed as Man United manager. And definitely the pressure was on him at the start of this season because revert back to last summer, Manchester United enjoyed a very good transfer window. Man United made four signings. You know, three of the four signings were major signings. And last summer, Man United must have spent around £141 million. Pounds. And last summer as well, when Solskjaer was Man United manager, he received very good backing from the board. Um... You know, the Glazers backed him, Ed Woodward backed him. Uh, we know that Woodward's leaving Manchester United soon. It got announced back in April this year that Woodward was leaving when that European Super League came into the equation. Uh, John Murtough backed him as well and Darren Fletcher backed him. So Solskjaer ran out of excuses in the end. Um, he did get appointed in as the interim manager back in December 2018. He was the interim manager in his first three months. He did very well as the interim manager, so the club decided to give him the job on a permanent basis back in March 2019. But obviously all he knew when he'd taken over as Manchester United manager, it was going to be a massive job, not only a massive job, a difficult job as well, because obviously Solskjaer was managing one of the biggest clubs in the world. Uh, when Solskjaer was Manchester United manager, he signed 14 players and enjoyed like five transfer windows. Man United spent over £400 million under Solskjaer. Uh, Solskjaer also got rid of a lot of players when he was Man United manager. He got rid of a lot of players permanently. He also loaned players out. You know, in his first full season, got Man United to three semi-finals and a third-place finish. In his second full season, got Man United to the EFL Cup semi-final, the FA Cup quarter-final and the Europa League final. When Solskjaer was Man United manager, that was Solskjaer's first major final as manager. But unfortunately, he didn't win it. 
And last season, um, he got us a second place finish. And when Manchester United had Solskjaer, Manchester United went 29 games unbeaten away from home in the Premier League. And I also like the way Solskjaer developed to the youth when he was United manager. So there you go. Um, Manchester United are supposed to play Newcastle on the 27th of December. I'm hoping the game against Newcastle will go ahead. You know, if the game against Newcastle goes ahead and Manchester United win, that will be four wins in a row in the Premier League. Now, Manchester United have had the last two games postponed due to COVID. Uh, Manchester United's game against Brentford got postponed and Manchester United's game against Brighton last weekend got postponed. A lot of other games as well have been postponed. I'm expecting Manchester United to beat Newcastle because Newcastle are a very, very poor team. They're relegation fodder. I can assure Newcastle will get relegated this season. Newcastle recently lost 4-0 to Man City. Uh, back in October, Newcastle had that three hundred million pound takeover by the Saudi Arabians. So Newcastle are obviously planning to invest heavily next year. You know, before the Saudi Arabians, uh, Newcastle had Mike Ashley. Mike Ashley was Newcastle's owner for around 13 years. You know, Mike Ashley got heavily criticised. Uh, Newcastle's manager is Eddie Howe. Newcastle appointed Eddie Howe in earlier on this season. When Eddie Howe got appointed in, he signed a two and a half year contract. Before Newcastle, Eddie Howe obviously managed Bournemouth. He was at Bournemouth for a long time. He also had a spell at Burnley. Uh, before Eddie Howe, Newcastle had Steve Bruce. You know, Steve Bruce was very, very poor. Newcastle sacked him. And before then, Newcastle had Rafa Benitez. Rafa Benitez uh, resigned from Newcastle because he didn't get enough backing. There was Newcastle fans that were disappointed when Rafa Benitez resigned. Uh, by the way, I do know quite a few of Newcastle's players. Obviously, they've got Alan St. Maximin. He's probably Newcastle's best player. He's just come back from injury not so long ago. Newcastle have also got Dwight Gale, an attacking player. They've also got... Joe Linton, they've got Callum Wilson, you know, Callum Wilson is a former Bournemouth player. They've also got Ryan Fraser, that's a former Bournemouth player. They've also got Elliot Anderson, they've got Jacob Murphy, they've got Sean Lonstaff, you know, Sean Lonstaff is the brothers with Matty Lonstaff. Matty Lonstaff is out on loan with Aberdeen at the moment. Newcastle have also got John Joe Shelby. I think he's got an injury now. John Joe Shelby is a former Liverpool and Swansea player. Newcastle have also got Isaac Hayden. Newcastle have also got Almiron. They've also got Matt Ritchie and Kieran Clark. Newcastle have also got Manquillo, um, he's got an injury at the moment, I think. Or has he got illness? Newcastle have also got Paul Dummett. Um, he's out with injury at the moment. They've got Jamal Lewis. He's out with injury. they got Jamal Lewis from Norwich. Uh, Federico Fernandez, you know, he's also out with injury as well at the moment. Uh, Newcastle have also got Jamal Lascelles. Uh, 
Uh, they've also got Joseph Willock. Uh, Newcastle's goalkeepers. They've got Carl Darlow. And they've got another goalkeeper called Dubravka. I'm um, not too sure. Is it Dubravka now that's first choice? Or is Carl, Carl Darlow first choice? So anyway, there are quite a few of the players that Newcastle have got. You know, Manchester United won the fixture at St James's Park last season 4-1 and Manchester United beat Newcastle earlier on in the season at Old Trafford 4-1. That was the game when Ronaldo scored twice on his second debut. We've got a good record against Newcastle. We seldom lose to them. Um, obviously, the last game Manchester United played was Norwich. You know, Manchester United won 1-0. Uh, Ronaldo scored the winning goal from the penalty spot. Uh, Manchester United do have players out, we've obviously got Lindelof out with a chest injury, Lindelof came off in the game against Norwich because he was suffering chest pains and breathing difficulties, he had to be replaced by Bailly, uh, Pogba obviously he's still out with a thigh injury, Pogba is out for the rest of the year. Pogba got the fine injury in France training earlier on in the season. Pogba has been stepping up his recovery though because he come back from Dubai not so long ago. <coughs> Didn't he? You know, Manchester United could sell Paul Pogba in the January transfer window. Well, Rangnick uh, said not so long ago he won't try to convince Pogba to stay at Man United if he wants to go. Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer. Before the start of the season, uh, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract offer. Uh, Cavani, um, he's injured at the moment, but he's close to returning. Uh, Raphael Varane, he's still out, but he's close to returning. Well, it did save the game against Brighton, would have gone ahead last weekend, that Varane could have made his return. So second injury, Varane's enjoyed it, you know, because earlier on in the season he had a groin injury and he was out of that groin injury for a few weeks. Uh, Martial, he's also got an injury as well, but he doesn't really get in the team. Um, I think Martial's leaving in January because the other week, Anthony Martial's agent confirmed that Martial wants to leave Man United in January. Man United have set their asking price for Anthony Martial. It's £30 million. Uh, Newcastle actually want Martial on loan. It said Newcastle are ready to pay a £6 million loan fee to sign Martial. Arsenal also want him, no. Juventus want Martial on loan. Atletico Madrid recently planning a swap deal and Barcelona have been interested as well. Rangnick revealed not so long ago that he's not spoken with Martial. You know, he told Martial to speak to him directly if he wants to leave the club. So anyway, there the injuries Man United have got at the moment. Have I missed anyone? Uh, Matic, you know, he's recently been out with a cold. And Juan Mata has also had illness. By the way, it says um, the Premier League is set to have a meeting today, today, you know, over, like, the COVID situation. And I've been hearing... Things like the games over the festive period are going to get cancelled from the 28th of December to the 30th of December. But like I said, Manchester United play on the 27th of December. Then we've actually got Burnley on the 30th of December. So there. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do. Consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.